This is the Missing Persons Reports, brought to you by Jamaica Chronicles. An Ananda alert has been activated for 14-year-old Onika Anderson of Spot Valley, St. James, who has been missing since Monday, September 4. She is of brown complexion, slim build, and about four feet tall. Reports from the Barrett Town Police are that at about 8.30 a.m., Wanika was last seen at home wearing a blue blouse, black jeans, and a pair of black slippers and has not been heard from since. Anyone knowing the whereabouts of Wanika Anderson is asked to contact Barrett Town Police at 876-953-7899, the Police Emergency 119 number, or the nearest police station. Angry residents in Denham Town blocked sections of the roadway on Thursday morning to protest the killing of 34-year-old Nicholas Miller, who they allege was killed in cold blood by cops on Wednesday. Placard-bearing protesters gathered in the community pleading for justice as they argued that Miller was innocent and didn't deserve the end he met. While the police are yet to release a statement on the shooting, residents say Miller was chased by cops on Wellington Street, where he was shot and killed. The incident reportedly happened sometime after 5 p.m. Residents mounted roadblocks and burnt tires as they voiced their frustration with the police force. Protesters say they are tired of police wiping out innocent men. Me is a resident in this community. I'm not looking for them before I'm born, before he had come from the front. Second time this police never stop follow for them till them kill him. For what? No reason man can surrender. I'm telling me no gunman identify himself. The first time I put a black pan him, he must go, 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 we can't take no more of it. Like when the police friend dead, we, we mourn for them and say, good police are good you this. If not a gun man, go around the church guard say the body. I'm a church brother, pick the man a gun man. We want justice. We can't tell no more police abuse. Go look for money while look for you. No know. trouble people in our trouble. You know. We tired of this. We are all here today, disgruntled and irated due to the fact that Police shot and killed a young man yesterday, right here, cold-blooded, in murder. And the fact that there was no illegal weapon achieved, we are very upset. And we are here in protest on behalf of the incident. Because this type of thing has been happening for too long. And it's now modern day security forces and government and it's modern day living and we are expecting to see changes where these types of incidents are concerned. I am concerned, they behind here are all concerned and the reason why I am here is because that situation could have been me and it could have been anyone else. So we want to send a message to Jamaica in general, that these types of incidents are uncalled for, they are unjust, and they should not happen. Nowhere. The Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of National Security, Dr. Horace Chang, joined the Commissioner of Police, Major General Anthony Anderson, for the From Police Station construction site tour on Thursday, September 7. The construction of the new police station is a part of the ministry's thrust to build fit-for-purpose police stations. The projects are coordinated by the Force Develop and Logistics Portfolio. Two brothers are now in custody after allegedly attempting to rob a 72-year-old businessman in St. Mary on Tuesday. The police report that around 3 p.m., the elderly businessman, who is a licensed firearm holder, returned home after doing business at the National Commercial Bank in Port Maria earlier in the day. 
On exiting his motor vehicle, the elderly man reportedly saw two unknown men approaching him. He called out to his wife to close all the doors as he ran inside. The two men, 28-year-old Evan Edwards and his 39-year-old brother, Alwayne, from Islington, allegedly started pounding on the door. The licensed firearm holder reportedly fired at the men who ran off. As they tried to escape, they were reportedly approached by a retired district constable who was unaware of what had happened earlier. The Edwards brothers then allegedly opened fire at the retired cop. The former cop returned fire, hitting the older sibling, Alwayne, while the younger one fled the scene. It is reported that the younger brother returned to the scene to retrieve the weapon and was pointed out. He was arrested along with his injured brother, who had earlier been taken to a medical facility for treatment. A 9 millimeter weapon was allegedly retrieved from the scene of the incident while the Highgate police are investigating. A police corporal accused of assisting a prisoner to escape from police lockup was on Wednesday remanded as he awaits a bail application in the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court on Friday. Corporal Ricardo Rose was recently arrested and charged with misconduct in a public office and aiding and abetting escaping custody. It is reported that on different dates earlier this year, Rose transported the prisoner from the Central Police Lockup to the Halfway Tree Police Lockup for interviews into an alleged case of fraud. The prisoner reportedly escaped on one of those occasions but was later recaptured. The matter was investigated and a file was prepared and sent to the Director of Public Prosecutions, who later ruled that Rose should be charged Wednesday when Rose appeared in court. The clerk of the court indicated that she was unable to respond to a bail application, as the file was submitted late. The bail hearing was then postponed to Friday, and Rose was remanded. A 20-year-old man who is accused of pretending to be the operator of an overseas job agency was reportedly beaten while in custody at a corporate area lockup it was shared in the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court on Monday that the defendant, Jamal Black, was hospitalized for injuries he received in a recent physical altercation. One custody officer with knowledge of the incident said he was beaten badly and almost killed. Black is charged on an indictment for 36 counts of obtaining money by means of false pretense and five counts of operating an overseas employment agency without a license. It was shared that Black purported to have an overseas travel agency and that he could provide employment opportunities for interested Jamaicans and requested a minimum of $150,000 to process visa applications and work permits. Applicants had to visit an office from which Black operated in the corporate area to make payments by cash or bank transfer. The Transport Authority has called in the police to commence a probe of a multi-million dollar racket involving the theft of vehicle parts, including engines at the pound in Falmouth, Trelawney. The police have been advised. We have asked the police to do a thorough investigation, and the police are currently treating with the investigation with respect of the affected vehicles, Managing Director of the Transport Authority, Ralston Smith, told the local media. The pound is located in proximity to the Falmouth Police Station. According to Smith, the irregularities were discovered during an audit at the pound after the security firm was recently replaced at the facility. We made the discovery just after change of the security arrangement. All our pound are covered 24 hours island-wide by security firms, and we discovered, subsequent from changing from one security firm to another, that a number of vehicles at our pound facility engines, among other parts, went missing, Smith said. The Transport Authority, as a reputable organization, ensures that it employs security companies for all of the locations, and a part of the security contract is that the security company is responsible for the safekeeping of those vehicles whilst in their custody. A senior member of staff at the Falmouth Police Station confirmed that the police received a report of the racket and a probe is expected to be launched. Smith told the media that parts are missing from 70% of the over 30 vehicles impounded at the facility. The Transport Authority will now review the security at all of the pounds they operate across the island. 
One man has been arrested and charged with two counts of shooting with intent, possession of a prohibited weapon and unauthorized possession of ammunition, following the wounding of two persons on Nut Hall Street in Kingston on Saturday, August 9. Charged is 49-year-old Torrance Stewart of Elgin Street, Denham Town, Kingston, 1. Reports from the Denham Town Police are that at about 7.15 p.m., both victims were along the roadway when explosions were heard. Both persons later felt a burning sensation and discovered that they had been shot. They were taken to hospital where they were treated and released. Intense investigations led to Stewart's arrest. He was subsequently charged on Sunday, September 3, based on an eyewitness statement while his court date is being finalized. Emerging during the latter half of the 90s, the enormously prolific Sizzler was one of the leaders of the conscious dancehall movement. Along with Buju, Banton, and Capleton, he helped lead dancehall back to the musical and spiritual influence of roots, reggae, favoring organic productions, and heavily Rastafarian subject matter. A member of the militant Bobo Ashanti sect, he sometimes courted controversy with his strict adherence to their views, particularly his revolutionary stance on homosexuality and white Western oppressors. Yet overall, his music was generally positive, advocating faith and compassion for poor black youth and respect for women. He remained something of an enigma to the public at large, rarely granting interviews and keeping his concert appearances to a minimum. Nonetheless, he still ranked as arguably the most popular conscious reggae artist of his time, thanks to a normally high standard of quality control, all the more impressive given the frequency with which he recorded. A versatile Singjay-style vocalist with a gruff, gravelly tone, he was capable of both rapid-fire chatting and powerful melodic singing, and his best backing rhythms were among the strongest in contemporary dancehall. Sisla was born Miguel Collins on April 17, 1976, and was raised in the August Town area of Kingston of devout Rastafarian parents. After owning his vocal skills, he landed a gig with the Caveman Hi-Fi sound system where he first made a name for himself as a performer. He cut his first single for the small Zagalu label in 1995 and soon moved on to Bobby Digital Dixon's Digital B imprint. However, he didn't manage a breakout success until saxophonist Dean Frazier recommended him to producer Philip Fattisborough. 